Hello, clouds. Welcome on Earth. I always thought they should be welcome to Earth. I don't know. You can see that there's some kind of nebulous, cloudy object out there in the middle of the lake. So what in the world could that be? And here the rain comes early. We know that before the rain came after the ravaging by the wolf, but here for Rose, the rain uh, might actually mean something a little different. Kind of sheets of rain coming and going there on the screen. And everyone keep your eye out on the uh, shore of the lake. Because there, in order to interact uh, with the wolf, we need some transportation. Ah, there it is. So, of course, uh, once again in this wolf encounter, we have a ton of water imagery and cloud imagery. Here we have a boat. Let's see what Rose does. Ah, she's going to get in. Notice that the boat has no oars. So that was the Ravaging of Rose. And once again we are placed in the rain in front of Grandmother's house. And uh, if you compare with uh, Robin, you will see that she is slightly closer now to the uh, fence. Uh, you'll also notice that similar to Robin, she has a kind of half-sleeping gate to her walk now. A part of Rose has died, thanks to the wolf. And now she has to go in and face uh, her trial in Grandmother's house.
You notice that the this wolf was a bit different than you might expect. Uh, Robin's wolf was pretty traditional, you know, wolf shape. Uh, even even a werewolf is something that's very familiar to many fairy tales. But this wolf was very abstract, and uh, I've looked at a lot of forum posts about interpretations of that scene, and uh, what's known as the cloud wolf is uh, one of the ones that really makes people pull their hair out trying to figure out what exactly it means. Um, my attempt is <laughs> going to be no better than most other people's, I assure you. But I have my own ideas. So here we are, our grandmother's house for Rose. You can see that the fan is on the floor as if we're not quite sure what our sense of direction is. You can hear the sound of rain and see little bits of rain across the screen every now and then. Um, the doors look unaffected. But then again, I guess having unaffected doors in the house is kind of small detail compared to the fact that it's raining. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, in this case, I think the w rain imagery means something different than for most of the other girls. Here we are in a, uh, a bathroom. Uh, mirrors on the wall for reflection. Um, also dealing with water imagery being in a bathroom. An empty bird's cage. As in, the bird has been set loose to fly. A flooding room. Giving the sense that you're drowning. You go under the murky water. And into a greenhouse. There's the crow that we saw standing on the table. You see again that the once again the room is turned on a strange angle, like we don't know which way is up. Enter through the mist, and we enter a corridor that is white and misty and ethereal. Here's the final room. Once again, you see the peacock wallpaper. And it looks like a raging storm. The bed is in pieces, flying, floating, spinning around. End of chapter 2. Items collected, 1 out of 3. Special rooms unlocked, 3 out of 3. Distance traveled, 1389 meters. Wolf encountered, yes. Success. Rank B. You have found the Misty Lake. So, um, time for Rose's analysis. From a narrative point of view, um, I interpreted the end scene that she wandered off into the woods to the shore of the Misty Lake and encountered some kind of cloud spirit, which beckoned her to come onto the lake. And she saw a boat, a boat that she could not control. But that didn't bother her very much. So she got into the boat. The spirit drew her towards where she to, towards the center of the lake, I should say. It uh, invited her to fly 
to spin to lose control, and eventually she drowned in the lake, not knowing which way was up or down, floating away, so to speak. From an analytical point of view, I think that Rose's story has to do with losing yourself. Um, it's certainly, I think, a healthy part of most people's lives to have spirituality, to be able to see beyond what is purely physical, what is down to earth, so to speak. But I think that Rose's story is saying that if you look too much at what is non-physical, what is ethereal, you will literally float away. Um, you won't quite be there much anymore. There's, you know, plenty of experiences that one should also have uh, in the physical world as well. And there are very real, um, if not, if you don't think real objects in the world, there are at least real emotions real consequences of actions that you do when you are in the physical world. And uh, there's something to, to note and pay attention to as well. You can't always keep your head high up in the clouds or else you might trip and fall into a lake and drown. A very physical lake, <laughs> so to speak. So uh, I think Rose learned that she wanted to float away and fly too much, and in the end, kind of lost all of her direction. So hopefully in the future she will be able to keep her feet on the ground at least sometimes during her life. So we say goodbye to Rose, and move on to the next chapter.